Well, okay, moving on to the next unit. It's on microorganisms and plants. Fun, huh? I think so. All right, so our lesson is 20.1 on viruses. Let's start there. And on the bottom, you can see the far side very well. It says, pull out, Betty, pull out. You hit, you hit an ar artery. And yes, um, mosquitoes are great carriers for viruses for us. All right, so our two objectives are explain how viruses reproduce and also explain how viruses cause infections. So let's think about it first. Imagine that farmers have begun to lose their, to their tobacco crops to a plant disease. And to determine what is causing the disease, you take leaves from a disease plant and crush them to produce a liquid extract. The liquid contains disease-causing agents so small they are not visible under a microscope and can pass right through a filter. What would you do next, and how would you deal with the invisible? Well, these following scientists actually address that issue. In, 1980, in 1892, excuse me, Dmitry Ivanovsky demonstrated that the cause of tobacco, tobacco mosaic disease was found in the liquid extracted from infected, infected plants. Then this gentleman, 1897, Martinus Bejernik, suggested that tiny particles in the juice caused the disease, and he named these particles viruses, after the Latin word for poison. And then in 1935, Wendell Stanley isolated crystals of toba tobacco mosaic viruses, and since we know that living organisms do not crystallize, Stanley inferred that the viruses were not alive. So a virus is a non-living particle made of proteins, nucleic acids, and sometimes lipids. Viruses can reproduce only by infecting living cells. And they differ widely in terms of size and structure. Most viruses are so small that can be only seen with the aid of a powerful electron microscope. The protein coat surrounding the virus is called a capsid. As you can see the various difference, differences here. And some viruses, such as the influenza virus, have an additional membrane that surrounds the capsid the simplest virus contain only a few excuse me, it's getting like genes, whereas the most complex may have more than a hundred genes. Most viruses have proteins in the surface membrane or capsids that bind to receptor proteins in the host cell. The proteins trick the cell to take the virus, or in some cases just its genetic material, into the cell. And then once inside, the viral genes are eventually expressed and they destroy the cell. Most viruses infect only a very specific kind of cell. Plant viruses infect plant cells. Most animal viruses only infect certain related species of animals. And viruses that infect bacteria are called bacteriophages. Let me show you a quick video animation on these bacteriophages. Here's our virus coming in. They're flying all over the place, invisible to our eye, of course. Lands on a unicellular organism, prokaryotic cell. There it is. Injecting, binding to the site, injecting its DNA right through the cell membrane, cell wall, and everything. See that? Right through the layers. Anyhow, I think that's pretty interesting to watch. I have another one I can show you. It's a little bit longer, but we'll, we'll, t we'll see it in class. So, how do viruses reproduce? They re reproduce by infecting living cells. So, explain how viruses cause infection. In a lytic infection, a virus enters a bacterial cell, makes copy of those cells, and causes the cell to burst or to lice. All right, bacterial T4 is an example of bacterial phagy that causes such an infection. Bacterial T4 has a DNA core inside a protein capsid that binds, I went too far, to the surface of the host cell. So here how it works. The, right here, the virus injects the DNA into the cell. Here, the cell begins to make a messenger RNA, transcribing it from the viral genes. The viral um, mRNA is translated. M mRNA is translated into viral proteins that chop off the cells, chop up the cells' DNA. The viral mRNA is translated into viral proteins that chop up. I said that already. The host cell 
I should say. The host cell, metabolic, met, 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 metabolic system, also makes copies of the capsid proteins. The vironucleic acid and capsid protein are then assembled into new virus product particles. The host cell lyses, right here, and releases hundreds of virus particles that go into an infect another um, cell. And the Lydic virus is similar to an outlaw in the wild west of the American frontier and demands that the virus makes on its host. First, the outlaw eliminates the town's existing authority, locks them up. In a Lytic infection, the host, host cell's DNA is then chopped up. Next, the outlaw demands to be outfitted with new equipment. Give us your stuff from the local townspeople. All right, the other organelles in the cell. In a Lytic infection, the viruses use the host cell to make up viral DNA and viral proteins. Finally, the outlaw forms a gang that leaves the town to attack new communities. In a Lytic infection, the host cell burst, releasing hundreds of virus particles. Fascinating, isn't it? Ugh. Let's look at lysogenic infections. There's two different types you need to be aware of here. All right, so some bacterial uh, viruses cause lysogenic infections. In a lysogenic infection, the host cell's not immediately taken over. All right. Um, the viral nucleic acid is inserted into the host cell's DNA. Then, oops, working slow here. The viral DNA is then copied along with the host DNA without damaging the host. It's slow right now. Oh, well, anyhow. All right. Um, the viral DNA multiplies as the host cell also mul multiplies. So that's how it reproduces itself by just being duplicated along with the rest of the, the cell. And, and in this way, each generation of daughter cells de derived from the original host cell is then infected. And bacterial DNA then beco that becomes embedded in the bacterial host DNA. It's called prophage right there. The prophage may remain part or of the DNA of the host cell for many, many generations. Influences from the environment, like radiation or heat, etc., can trigger the prophage to become active. It's not moving forward for me for some reason. It then removes itself from the host cell DNA, directs the synthesis of the new virus's particles, and now becomes an active lytic. lytic. Come on, don't mess with me. There it goes, active lytic infection. So about 70% of the viruses contain RNA rather than DNA. In humans, RNA viruses cause a wide range of infections from relatively mild colds to severe cases of HIV. Certain kinds of cancer also begin with an infection by viral RNA. Cold viruses attack with a very simple fast-acting infection. A capsid settles on a cell. All right typically in the host cell's nose, and it's brought inside, where a viral protein makes many new copies of the viral RNA. The host cell's ribosomes mistake the viral RNA for the host's own messenger RNA and translates it into capsids and other viral proteins. Then these new capsids assemble around the viral RNA cap copies, and within eight hours, the host cell releases hundreds of new virus particles to infect other cells. And that's how you get a cold. HIV, as we know, is a deadly disease called acquired immune deficiency syndrome, AIDS, and it's caused by an RNA virus called human Im Im immunodeficiency viruses, or HIV. HIV belongs to a group of RNA viruses that are called retroviruses. The genetic information of a retrovirus is copied from DNA to RNA, instead of from DNA to RNA. When retrovirus infects a cell, it makes a DNA copy of its RNA. The copy inserts itself into the DNA of the host cell. Then the retroviral infections are similar to lysogenic infections of bacteria, much like a prophage in a bacterial host. The viral DNA may remain inactive for many cell cycles before making new virus particles and then damaging the host's immune system. All viruses are parasites. Parasites depend upon living, other living organisms for their existence harming these organisms in the process. 
Viruses must infect living cells in order to grow and reproduce, taking advantage of the nutrients and cellular machinery of their host. And viruses have many of the characteristics of living things, though. After infecting living cells, viruses can reproduce, regulate gene expression, and even evolve. Some of the main differences between cells and viruses are summarized in this chart that you see right here. Although viruses are similar and simpler than the smallest cells, it is unlikely that they were the first living organisms. Because viruses are dependent upon living organisms, it seems more likely that viruses developed after living cells. The first viruses that may have evolved from genetic material of living cells, and viruses have since then continued to evolve along with the cells they infect for billions of years. So objective two is explain how viruses cause infection. So inside living cells, viruses use their genetic information to make multiple copies of themselves. Some viruses replicate immediately, while others initially perish, or in, in, initially persist, I should say, not perish, in an inactive state within the host. So those are our objectives, explain how viruses reproduce and explain how viruses cause infections. And they definitely support our goal of explaining the significance of genetic factors, environmental factors, and pathogenic agents to the health from the perspective of both individual and public health. And there is what I could find is a cute picture of viruses. I do apologize. Have a good day.